Hello, I'm Jillian. Thank you for joining me. For millennia, humans have embraced the power of stories to capture the richness, nuances, and complexities of human life and to give meaning to lived experiences. Narrative inquiry is a qualitative methodology that is based on this tradition. Ontological and epistemological assumptions underpin narrative inquiry. They include humans lead story lives. Our understandings of the stories we tell and the stories we hear others tell shape our lives. Multiple interpretations and vantage points are possible. Individual experiences can inform and give meaning to shared experiences and social reality. And stories represent a way of knowing. In fact, some suggest that certain things are only known through story. Several years ago, I studied this research methodology and I conducted a small unpublished narrative inquiry. That inquiry touched me in a profound way, not primarily regarding the phenomenon of study, but rather the act of sharing and connecting stories with others. I won't review that study in this video, but I will present key concepts for, of narrative inquiry for consideration so that you might explore this methodology in your own work. Disciplined and systematic, narrative inquiry encompasses the standard elements of empirical research, including a rationale, theoretical foundation, phenomenon of interest, ethically justifiable methods, rigorous analysis, and scholarly representation of results. Each, however, is interpreted through a narrative lens. In other words, the inquirer thinks about stories and with stories. It's difficult to separate these two tasks because they happen simultaneously, but I do so here for the purposes of illustration and explanation. Thinking about stories means that the stories are the object of study, the data that are mined and analyzed in regard to the phenomenon of interest. The stories that are collected can be as large as one's entire life story or as small as a single critical event or anywhere in between. Stories can be recounted orally in presentations, conversations, or formal interviews with either a single participant or a group of participants. Interviews would be semi-structured or unstructured and use open-ended questions that are derived from observations, photographs, a memory box, artifacts, or another story, for example. Stories can also be found in texts and artifacts, such as journals, diaries, letters, emails, blogs, biographies, autobiographies, artwork, and photographs, upon which document or artifact analysis would be performed. And stories may be lived in real time through, for example, observations and or interactions with participants. This might include the research process as a shared lived experience between the researcher and the participants. The studies can use a single method to generate stories in a single format or multiple methods to generate stories in multiple formats. When field notes are recorded, such as with observations and sometimes with interviews, they're in storied form to maintain the integrity of the data. Here's an example of storied field notes. I'll let you pause to read. Narrative inquirers believe that knowledge is embedded in the holistic nature of stories and that this knowledge would be lost if the stories were deconstructed, abstracted, categorized, generalized, or reduced to logical propositions, principles, or empirical laws and rules. So narrative inquiry involves a process of storying or thinking with stories, such that the stories are reconstructed or restoried in analysis to create a grand narrative or narratives with characters, scene, and plot. This grand narrative attends to what Clandinen and others call three common places, time, place, and sociality. All three apply to the story itself and the research context in which the story is told or discovered. 
time acknowledges that everything is transitional and there is continuity between the past, present, and future, such that the past reflects significance, the present infuses value, and the future conveys intention. Understanding the significance of the past and imagining future possibilities takes place from the viewpoint of the present. Place refers to the concrete locations and surroundings of events and experiences, including those of the research context. And sociality has two parts. Firstly, it includes external conditions, social conditions, such as cultural, institutional, societal, and linguistic particularities, and the nature of the relationship and interactions between participants and inquirers, if the study involves participants. Secondly, it includes internal personal conditions like feelings, hopes, desires, aesthetic reactions, existential viewpoints, and moral dispositions of the story's characters, and again, of those involved in the research study. In restorying, therefore, multiple narrative strands with the nuances and complexities of these three common places are woven together. If the study involves the inquirer also sharing stories with participants, then the inquirer might provide two narrative strands, one as the researcher and one as a participant. Details from other sources, such as photographs, newspaper articles, websites, may also be added to support or embellish the retelling of a story. Sometimes, restoring is based on a chronological framework so that the story is organized according to the timeline of events. But the strands may also be grouped by themes or, or juxtaposed according to contradictions. Because narrative inquiry involves content of a personal nature and a process that can become quite intimate when participants are involved, Participants and inquirers are more emotionally and psychologically vulnerable than with other qualitative methodologies. For example, participants must trust inquirers to safeguard their stories and to represent them with integrity, sensitivity, fidelity, and fairness. Inquirers must trust participants to tell stories that are truthful and real and to avoid intentionally embellishing or functionalizing them. Further, when participants and inquirers collaborate to reconstruct and restore experiences, high levels of respect, care, sensitivity, empathy, and compassion are required. So ethical considerations extend beyond regular institutional requirements for privacy, confidentiality, integrity, and generally avoiding harm to also include relationship, pro-social, and moral values. Narrative inquiry requires researchers to make a moral investment in their relationship with participants. Experiential stories are particularly suited to providing insights into how knowledge, identity, motivation, beliefs, or values are developed, understood, shaped, altered, or applied. Each line represents a possible narrative inquiry that can be applied to a particular phenomenon. So for example, in education, where my particular interests lie, experiential stories may inform how a non-Indigenous school context impacts identity development of Indigenous students, or how teachers' beliefs shape pedagogical choices, or how teachers apply moral knowledge in the classroom, or what can be understood about the role students' personal values have in their learning. And finally, how teacher motivation is altered in the context of school reform. Additionally, stories can help teachers understand how students experience a new reading program, a new class management practice, a new pedagogy, or the implementation of a new technology. Student stories can inform teachers in very different ways than academic scores and attendance records can. Doyle says that teaching can only be known through story. And Carter says, stories capture more than scores of, or mathematical formulae ever can, the richness and indeterminacy of our experiences as teachers and the complexity of our understandings of what teaching is. These sentiments seem profoundly significant in the climate of algorithms and standardized testing, 
the latter of which seems to have taken a negative hold of education in the United States. Influenced by memory and hindsight, and framed by multiple perspectives and viewpoints, narrative inquiry has limitations in regard to presenting objective and generalizable truths and identifying common themes that might feed taxonomies and frameworks. But these were never its goals. Rather, narrative inquiry embraces the complexities, nuances, and ambiguities of human experience, seeking new and alternative possibilities, multiple voices, viewpoints, and interpretations, and provisional truths and models for how things work. Humans are natural storytellers and story listeners. It's how we connect with each other, share insights, and pass on knowledge. Conducting a narrative inquiry is a deeply human experience, a soulful journey into the storied worlds of others. I'll leave you with a graphic summary of these key ideas, followed by a bibliography of resources, both of which you can pause on to review. And if you have tried narrative inquiry, please share your experiences in the comments.